Yes, and I should <clears throat> say that um, our sampling procedure for this, uh, these interviews is entirely <laughs> non-random, and if there's anyone here who wants to volunteer to have me give you a call back and talk to you a little bit about how you're using ESDS international data sets for your research, for your teaching, or, I don't know, entertaining your friends, uh, I'd be happy to, to talk to you. I have a sort of um, rubric that takes about 20 minutes, uh, and I'm, I'm looking for more uh, subjects. So, um, I've been giving talks while I've been here in the UK, and uh, at the University of Manchester provided me one audience. I was at LSE last weekend, or last uh, week, and uh, at a open government data camp uh, as well at the end of the week. And in each of those, I've talked about the bank's experience in opening up its databases, uh, taking them out of a, a model of a, a licensed uh, chargeback model to uh, open free data and its implications for the way in which we approach the management of our uh, databases. Uh, but today I'm going to do something completely different, partly because some people already heard this talk, and um, also because Jackie had asked me some months ago to think about statistical literacy. And um, I did, but then I began to think about it in a sort of slightly perverse way, uh, which is to think, as I say here in the subtitle of this talk, uh, from the ground up, which by which I mean what you might want to know about the data you're using before you use it. Whereas I think normally when we're talking about quantitative methods and statistical literacy, we're talking about application of techniques to the data. Uh, well, I'm also talking about application of techniques to the data, but again, the way the data get processed on the way up. And this is pretty, um, well, some, may, some people may just think it's daft, uh, especially because it's probably not suitable for teaching at the undergraduate level. Yet, when I think back to my first experience in exposure to quantitative methods, when I was an undergraduate and I was um, sort of thrown to uh, one of the senior members of the faculty who wanted me to go out and collect data that would allow him to look at what at the time was a very hot topic, the so-called Phillips curve, which um, has, has now gone to economic dust, I think. Um, you know, I had to go learn a lot about where did uh, these data come from, how was uh, CPI data put together, and, and uh, you know, how did you rebase a series from one time period to the next, and all these sorts of things that were never explained in the basic econometrics class I'd taken. Now, I'm not going to answer all these questions. I don't even, I don't have a coherent um, prescription here, but I want to sort of at least make you familiar with some of the information that's available out there about um, the, the, the sort of the, the foundations of these national level official statistics that so far we've been talking about using in quantitative methods. Um, uh, just to give you a feeling for uh, the kind of data we're talking about though, uh, here's a, a rough breakdown of the kinds of information that are in the World Development Indicators database, which is one of the databases that my group uh, builds and supports. So you can see about a quarter of it has something to do with the economy, national accounts, uh, balance of payments, um, issues of that uh, sort. A, a large part of the, uh, this is shared data that we get from the, uh, the IMF. Uh, the environment, limited amount of uh, national level information, one of the problems with the environment is that a lot of the really interesting information is transnational, it covers ecosystems rather than discrete national entities, or it's uh, remote sensing data which requires you know, much different uh, skill to, uh, to analyze. Global development finance would be back to more economic data, this is the data the bank collects on the um, uh, indebtedness of uh, external debt of developing countries. Global links is a kind of a code phrase here for a lot of information about flows between countries, including trade flows, aid flows, migration flows, things of that sort. Broadly, social democratic is the other big uh, category. I hadn't noticed that it coincidentally is the same number of indicators as the economy. And you know, if you use data very much, you're suspicious when coincidences like that show up in your table. 
but I hope that number is right. Uh, I calculated it myself. Uh, but so it's sort of what it suggests, education, health, population statistics, things of that sort. States and markets, another code phrase for a, a group of indicators, many of them governance uh, type indicators or other measures of the role that states play in um, regulating markets. And cross domain refers largely to indicators that are constructed by taking indicators from one group and dividing or multiplying them by indicators from another group. Um, and most of these data don't come, don't originate at the World Bank. A generous classification suggests that about 45%, 44% originated somehow within the bank and the rest came from other places. The largest single group there, 14% uh, from uh, the UNESCO Institute of Statistics. I'm sorry that Denise couldn't stay this afternoon because among other things, I think she, her talk, which I missed courtesy of the traffic types in London, touched on some of these topics, and she, of course, was the founder of the UNESCO Institute of Statistics about 10 years ago. Um, and then you see uh, the IMF is our second uh, uh, largest source, and, and so on around the wheel. Now, one of the interesting points here is that that means we're agglomerating data from many different uh, agencies who have their own methods of handling and processing the, uh, well, first obtaining and then processing the uh, underlying source data. Most of it flowing upwards from developing countries who one way or the other, either through administrative processes, through surveys, or um, by other um, methods, create the original underlying series. And that always raises this question of assessing uh, statistical quality. How good are the statistics we're using? Uh, and I don't have an answer to that uh, in any specific case or in a general case. What we can and try to do is to document as well and as carefully as we can how the statistics themselves come about and the quality of the institutions themselves that are producing statistics. So in this case, the National Statistical Office or the Ministry of uh, Education or the Ministry of Health uh, at, the, at the country level. And I have up here two little uh, clippings, one uh, from the UN uh, which happens to highlight the principles governing international statistical activities. And although one can easily dismiss uh, this as sort of high level, you know, the kind of uh, language you get in international resolutions promising always to do the best, it's actually quite an interesting document and um, embodies in it recommended practices that are worth looking at just to understand what a statistical agency faces when it tries to go about um, producing a, a set of statistics. And then the other clipping is from the IMF's um, Dissemination Standards Bulletin Board. Uh, I think you actually uh, heard a reference from Gareth earlier to the SDDS, the standard, uh, the, the statistical, sorry. Yeah. Special. Special Data Dissemination Standard. I don't think you mentioned the GDDS, which is the General Data Dissemination system. I should build this better. Uh, we've we've co collaborated with the IMF um, for a number of years in this um, activity, and particularly on the GDDS, which is a mechanism for trying to introduce better standards and, and data management practices into developing countries before they have sort of reached the level where they can graduate, as we say, to the SDDS, which is a standard which they subscribe to and promise to here to and can be sort of reported on if they don't. Um, but I'm actually more interested in pointing out um, this last acronym down here, DCAF, which is the Data Quality Assessment Framework. And that's, I think, the best codification of, uh, you know, systematic way of looking at what underpins data quality. Uh, and here's the short version of that. It's, it's far too uh, long and uh, detailed to talk about in a short uh, lecture here. You didn't know you were going to get this when you came, did you? <laughs> but I think that, that the IMF has done a huge service to the international statistical community by really trying to think systematically and then go out and apply uh, the DCAF standards to uh, statistical offices around the world. And we've collaborated with them by trying to implement a similar set of recommendations 
for the sort of the social and demographic uh, statistics that the, whereas the IMF is focused, as you might expect, on the, um, the national economy, financial statistics, and so forth. So five big headings uh, that define the dimensions of data quality, um, starting with the first, the assurances of integrity. Look at this whole institutional framework in which the statistics are produced, including, for example, is there legislation that guarantees the independence of the statistical office? Is there an orderly process for providing a budget to that office? How overall are, is the statistical system governed and is governed in a way that gives you some assurance that you know, the, as the um, principles for statistics would suggest that their first uh, and foremost job is to ensure the quality of the statistics coming out. Methodological soundness, I think, is perhaps um, the most important or the most, well, perhaps the most complex. I won't say one is more important than the other. But this gets us into the particular frameworks and classification systems, which I'll, I'll give you a taste of in a minute, that underpin the systematic collection of almost any kind of data, whether we're talking about, again, national accounts, balance of payments, or uh, demographic statistics, or poverty statistics, and so forth. Um, accuracy and reliability. Again, the subheadings uh, are only suggested here because I couldn't include all the other defining uh, phrases, but does, does the statistical agency itself conduct its business in a way that guarantees or ought to guarantee the accuracy and reliability of the information that are being reported? Do they check against other sources? Do they check to make sure that their intermediate outputs are consistent with their final outputs? Do they conduct revision studies so that they can learn when the data get revised? why they got revised, and what to do in the future. Um, serviceability, again, uh, many people would turn the question of quality of statistics into a uh, question more of serviceability. Do they help you do the thing that you need to do with them? Um, but they won't be very serviceable if they're not reasonably, um, they're not produced on a reasonable schedule and in a timely manner with consistency both over time and across countries. And again, if there's not a clear revision policy and, and procedure so that when um, it's not necessarily errors, but when more information, let's say, arrives, the, uh, the statistical series are properly updated and reported, and you're aware of that. And then finally, accessibility, which is back to the open data question. <clears throat> All that data doesn't do much good if it's locked up in vaults, it needs to be accessible, and of course that talks about the interface and the ease in which somebody accesses it as well as uh, the cost of accessing it. Along with data, of course, metadata are terribly important. In fact, that's one of the focal uh, points of both the SDDS and the GDDS approach to this, and do we provide assistance to users? So a whole raft of things to think about, um, but with a real emphasis probably or more in interest here on the points about methodological soundness and uh, accuracy and reliability. Now, for the World Bank, and with the help, actually, of the IMF, there was a joint project, we tried to sort of percolate this down to some relatively easy to obtain measures that could be used to rate the statistical capacity of countries. Uh, one of the reasons for doing this is to guide us in our own uh, activities of providing funding to countries to improve their statistical capacity. So if you're going to improve their statistical capacity, you'd like to know sort of where do they stand in the league table? How bad is it? Or what are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? And we cooked this down into three headings, methodology, source data, and periodicity, and timeliness. And the reason it got cooked down so much, and you'll see in a moment, was that in the end, it didn't do us any good to define a very complex uh, indicator for which we couldn't actually collect the data ourselves. And to do, on a regular basis, on an annual basis, the kind of full-fledged assessment that's imagined in a DCAP was just beyond um, our own resources as well. So what we have done is to try to distill this into things that we can generally know simply by consulting the available metadata country or asking a reasonably simple set of questions 
of the National Statistical Office. So, uh, and I won't try to explain uh, all of these things here, but in terms of methodology, this really is looking at are they following the current published recommended practices for, for example, compiling national accounts or balance of payments? Um, and are they uh, doing it, have they done so within a, a reasonable uh, space of time? You'll see that timing and periodicity is a big thing throughout here. You'll notice down below on point number 10, we give extra points to countries that are subscribers to the SDBS. Um, in terms of source data, this is going to look a little bit as though we're only talking about periodicity. But the real point is that if you don't have a census within the last 10 years, your ability to construct other statistical series is very limited because the, the, the census, among other things, generally provides your whole uh, survey framework. Uh, it's an important feeder into the national accounts and other compilations. So if you don't have good source time, recent timely source data, you're, um, you're starting uh, at a deficit. The same thing would be true of agricultural censuses and so forth, um, recent uh, poverty uh, surveys, um, DHS, mix or other uh, health-related surveys. And we give extra points to countries that have a complete vital registration system, which is to say not most developing countries. And then finally, uh, frequency and periodicity of reporting of some of these measures. So you do it you know, within three years or five years or more, and different points depending upon uh, which indicators we're talking about and how frequently they're done. So all of that gives us a bit of a picture. And again, you see how some of these underlying concepts are at least we're, we're trying to apply them in order to get a picture of what's happening in the world. Here's a, a, a simple graphing of the, the blue line are the rank ordered 2010 scores uh, coming from the, um, the lowest scoring country up to the highest. Uh, the, the country names across the bottom are just sort of whatever um, Excel grab randomly to put up there. So Micronesia is not necessarily the lowest and I'd have to go look at my table to tell you which is the lowest. Uh, the red dots are um, their scores of the same countries in 2004. Now what's interesting here is I think, um, of course, the deviations. You'll see that in 2004, the scores, more countries are below the blue line in 2004 than are above it. That's evidence that on average, scores have been rising. Countries have been, uh, for example, many countries have already now gone through a census that's kicked scores up. And many countries have upgraded their um, system of national accounts and that's moved scores up. But you see some above the line, um, and that means those are countries that fell. Two of them, I think, are, are quite uh, emblematic of this, Zimbabwe and Cote d'Ivoire. You may remember, so this is comparing 2004 with 2010. You re may remember that in the intervening time, Cote d'Ivoire has had a major, massive uh, civil breakdown, civil war, actually. And so you can see the impact of that on the quality of statistics coming out of Cote d'Ivoire uh, and Zimbabwe, where the only question is, why was it as high as uh, it was in 2004? Now, as I said, underlying this are a lot of recommended practices and standards which are really quite important in understanding what the content of these statistics are. And I've just sampled a few of these here. And um, the source for this information and what I'll finish up talking about is a new system that the World Bank launched on World Statistics Day called the Virtual Statistical System. And it's an effort to create a portal that provides the information that somebody running a statistical office needs to know about running a statistical office, both the technical as well as the management uh, information. And I'm going to recommend it as uh, a source for you to find out more or to answer questions about how is that done or how is this done. Because that, well, the virtual statistical system along with the UN Statistic Division's uh, website basically gives you access to all that information and more. So when we think about frameworks and guidelines for compiling statistics, here are some examples of, of those. Most of these actually did come from uh, work that was sponsored by the UN uh, Statistics Division or through its system of so-called city groups, which are groups that are 
set up to go off and study an issue, usually at great length, and over a course of many years, they take with them the name of the first city that they uh, occurred, that the, that the group met in. Uh, so for example, the Rio group produced the handbook on poverty statistics. Uh, but they are very useful compilations of what is the current thinking on um, producing uh, statistics. So here are social and demographic statistics. On the macroeconomic side, uh, the first one I, I need to mention is the um, system of national accounts, which was just recently revised by the Intersecretariat Working Group on National Accounts, which is made up of Eurostat, the IMF, OECD, the UN Statistics Division, and the World Bank. This is the first um, major revision to uh, the recommendations on the system of national accounts since 1993. The IMF produces a series of very important manuals on, uh, which are guides to defining and compiling statistics on things like the um, balance of payments. Uh, the new edition is the BPM Manual 6. So at some point, we'll introduce that as the scoring criteria in our statistical capacity indicator. Um, Manual on Government Finance Statistics. I think it's actually been upgraded since 2001. We've got a new version now, no? Or is 2001 the latest? One, one thing about these we find is that they're always slow to be adopted. So it takes a long time for them to make their way into the system. Um, and then, uh, again, a compilation guide on money and finance statistics. And then, I think something that is often unappreciated and until you stumble up against it, is the importance of uh, work that statisticians do in setting up systems of classification. Uh, because that's really what allows us to take, oops, uh, I see an orange, oh, is that, is that the red card? Oops, okay, I'm, I'm almost there. Uh, so just a, here's, a, here's a kind of a list of some of the, the important ones that, that one should be aware of, you know, that if you're talking about for example, health statistics and reporting on health statistics, somewhere at the bottom of that, at the bottom of my list here, is probably the international classification of diseases. And certainly if you were to go out and try to collect data on morbidity and mortality, you would need to be aware of that. Um, otherwise, up and down this list are all uh, things that at least at some point in my working time I've, I've touched on. So that's the virtual statistical system. As I said, I have uh, some uh, pamphlets here, which I'm going to put out, I guess, on the table you can pick up that just sort of advertise it. It's what we released with the virtual statistical system uh, on uh, World Statistics Day last month. And uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, the work we're doing on improving microdata, but I am going to come back through here, oops, and leave that last screen in case anybody's interested and has some spare time coming up in the next month. Our Apps for Development competition is still underway with a closing date of January 10th. And this is a challenge to come up with new innovative ways of using, displaying, um, making accessible um, statistics, particularly to address some aspect of the Millennium Development Goals. The only other requirement is that you have to use at least a single data item from uh, the World Bank's uh, data set in the course of doing that. And if you're interested, uh, if you just Google actually apps for development at this point, you'll find out more information about that. I think several of the people who did poster sets out here are probably already um, you know, qualified to enter the competition. But in any case, uh, thank you all.